Hello and welcome to AV Cyberactive. Today's topic of discussion is going to be MITRE ATT&CK framework and how your security operations can use the framework to deploy use cases in your security operation center. Let's get started. Now, if you're actively participating in security, you must definitely have heard about MITRE ATT&CK framework. So I'm going to try to explain how it is deployed in security operations in real time. But how is MITRE ATT&CK beneficial? Why do we even use it? How do you deploy the tactics, techniques, and procedures in MITRE ATT&CK frameworks in real life scenario or on your security operations? Let's go to the MITRE ATT&CK website and I try to understand the tactics, techniques, sub techniques, and how you can map it to your real SIEM or your security operation solutions. Let's begin with going on to the MITRE ATT&CK website itself that is attack.mitre.org. The moment you come into the website, you'd be greeted with the tactics at the top. That is TAID, reconnaissance, resource deployment, initial access, execution, persistence, privilege escalation, defense evasion, credential access, discovery, lateral movement collection, command and control or C2, exfiltration and impact. These are all your tactics go ahead and now click on sub technique and these are all your techniques and sub techniques so techniques or your tactics would have taid and your sub techniques would have the tids followed by a dot and then three more digits let's click on one of them and this will be the one review we will be reviewing today for your red team and blue team practices. Let's go and go to the first one that is spare phishing service. And you would see right over here it says sub technique of T1598. Your T1598 is your phishing information, and the sub technique is T11 T1598.001. You will also see that there are some mitigating controls mentioned in the sub technique that how you can mitigate, detect the this kind of an ad, this kind of an attack. So mitigating phishing, as mentioned earlier, user training is the best way you can mitigate spear phishing attacks. Followed by detection. How would you detect? You apply application log content control, that is your layer 7 application or web application firewalls. You can also go ahead and monitor social media traffic and look for suspicious activities, including messaging, requests, and information. That is where your SIEM consumes logs from email gateways. You can also apply network traffic content, network flow controls as well moving ahead with spare phishing, at, spare phishing attachment and you would see procedure examples medications detections your procedure examples are the way how this attack can be carried out for example dragonfly has it's a name of a group that has used the spear phishing with microsoft office attachment to enable Harvesting of user credentials. Now, for every procedure, there's a SID, GID. Mitigating control for spear phishing would be again and applying anti spoofing and email authentication services, which is applying SPF on your web gateway, center policy framework, and DKIM to verify the integrity of your messages. Detection. Again, detection is application lock control content that is filtering based on DKIM and SPF, monitoring traffic control and network traffic flow. So when you do your red team, and blue team assessments, or you also you do a, go ahead and with use cases for your security operations, you can take these procedures examples, test it on your SIEM or your security operations environment and apply the mitigating controls and detection detecting controls. So again, going back to your tactic, that is enterprise, or let me go ahead and click over here. Enterprise tactic, that is reconnaissance. Technique 
is the fishing and sub techniques are your spear fishing service, spear fishing attachment, and spear fishing link. Now, there's one more thing that you can keep and that you should keep in mind. That let's click on show techniques, find P H I S H fishing. You would see that fishing it's coming under reconnaissance tactic and also under initial access and let's go and find some more it also comes under the tactic lateral movement this is because this fishing technique is just not a sub technique it is just not limited to the tactics it or there are multiple ways how these sub techniques or these techniques can be used and be mapped to a parent tactic because spear fishing once someone is inside the network can also perform lateral movement and the same applies to initial access as well so that once the spear, spear fishing attack or attack is done you the adversaries can also perform initial access after exploiting or uh, delivering the email now let's take another example this time we'll take schedule tasks so let's go and try to find schedule tasks which is this time coming under the tactic execution however there's a possibility that it might be listed in the multiple tactics so schedule jobs is listed under persistence schedule job is also listed under privilege privilege escalation and it's also listed under exfiltration now let's go ahead and click on schedule job and we will see there are five sub techniques appearing under tuition so it's sub technique is at cron jobs schedule task system timers, container orchestration let's take an example of cron jobs so procedures and examples is how your red team can perform those attacks mitigating controls for cron jobs is to do regular audits to check and see if there are any cron jobs that are running which you don't know or which you're not aware of again user management is another way how you can mitigate the malicious cron jobs detection this is an interesting one for cron jobs that is you detect by monitoring the executed atq command and ensure the ip address is stored in ssh connection and you also can detect it by making sure that no unexpected uh, file modifications have been done no unexpected processes has been created and scheduled jobs or your cron jobs this applies to your windows environment also that you can look into if there are any cron jobs that are there that would maintain any kind of a persistence in your network so again we go back and try to look for scheduled jobs so if there are scheduled jobs it can be used for execution it can be used for privilege escalation if there's a service hiding in your environment behind a service and of course a scheduled job can also be used to exfiltrate anything out of your network so that the uh, the adversaries try to do this so that they can covertly exist on your network communicate with the c2 and whenever they see fit they will execute the command hope that was clear now that was a brief introduction of mitre attack framework and how your red team and blue team can use it or use this framework on your day-to-day -day daily operations and security operations practices let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see more on mitre attack techniques tactics and procedures i'd like i'll be more than happy to cover more on these topics don't forget to subscribe and like the video so i can be encouraged to do more of these videos in the future and until next next time happy monitoring bye now